video is sponsored by PokedownStore.com, the best place to get yourself some TCGO code cards. They have a huge variety up on their website, including the new battle style set. So definitely check out the website and you can use the coupon code ZAPDOSTCG for 5% of your complete order. How wonderful is that? Even uh, yeah, for the stuff like uh, Reshazard codes, Mew Mew codes, uh, Luke Metal codes, Eternus codes, Zacian codes, League Battle decks, you name it. Be sure to check out the website. It's awesome. Also, check out uh, cardmarket.com. This is a European platform that I personally use every single day. You can buy and sell uh, cards to people all across Europe, which is actually very wonderful. And you can uh, yeah, just go on the website by clicking that link, the affiliated link in the description. You're going to be helping me out a ton. Anyhow, uh, without further ado, let's just get this video started. I'm already hyped up. Hopefully, you guys are hyped as well. Peace. Going on in the matter game, some top positions just stay the same. ADP Picaram, they still remain, but the Urshi fools wanna make a name. Who else is there to talk about? Victini takes them knockouts on evolving Vs, there's no doubt that it's powerful. Just try it out, or how about a G Max rapid flow? 120 on two, it just happened, yo. Way out the Mew, it's a magic so Pokemon disappear, yeah, there they go. Psychic Dax are back to remember perfection, it's Mew too. When Dragon Ball, you have no clue, they're well positioned because of Urshi Fu. Hands no matter with the CGI, certain Dax will lose, but they can't try. Mad part is good and just say it's bye to Dax. Like Mewtwo, I hereby think the matter is quite the first loot metal praise on turn This thinking a new deck is not obvious, and I like it that way. I'm serious, yes. The top 10 best decks with battle styles legal. Here we go. What's up, YouTube? It's Zapdos TCG here, and welcome back to our TCG video on my channel. On this channel, you get daily Pokemon TCG content, so be sure you are subscribed so you don't ever miss out. Today we're going to be uh, talking about the top 10 best decks with Battle Styles legal. Battle Styles has been legal for two weeks and we have some data. The data has been collected by DanoData.app and my personal opinion. So we actually uh, combined it together. If your opinion is different, be sure to let me know what your, you think the best decks of the format are in the comment section below. And without further ado, we're actually going to be talking about some honorable mentions that barely didn't make the top 10. So uh, first off is Single Strike Urshifu VMAX. I still wanted to uh, give you guys a list if you guys want to be uh, testing the list out or maybe perfecting the list whatsoever. That is still something that uh, you can do. So single strike Urshifu VMAX. It is uh, a very strong Pokemon which is able to go through any effect. So stuff like the Sidewai Altaria doesn't uh, cause any troubles. You also one hit KO VMAXs and tag teams all together. And uh, it's a strong archetype but requires some setup. You do need to find your Houndoom. Uh, you do need to, of course, get multiple Houndooms in play to even use the G-Max one blow. And uh, sometimes it could be crucial things priced like uh, lots of your single strike energies or your uh, yeah, Urn of Vitality. Sometimes that could be the case. Uh, sometimes you don't get your setup. And other things uh, that are also not too good is that there's a lot of Psychic in the meta game right now. That specifically focuses on knocking out Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX and Single Strike Urshifu VMAX just get caught in the crossfire. There are better VMAX archetypes out there. But you can still try it out. This is a list for you. So uh, just take a print screen and uh, do your stuff. Next up is uh, Blacephalon, my personal favorite deck. So uh, why is Blacephalon not higher up on the list? Uh, not a lot of people seem to be playing Blacephalon right now. They just uh, opted to go for Victini VMAX or Santa Scorch VMAX over the Blacephalon list. This is still Tempo Zord, aka Crescephalon, whatever you want to call it. So you still have options with this deck. There's still four blounds. You still want to kill VMAX's tag teams all together. And uh, they do, uh, of course, have the uh, include of the uh, escape rope, which helps to get Jirachis out of the active position, but it can also help out to swing something from the opponent's bench into the active slot, which definitely helps. You also need Mew right now to protect your bench from stuff like uh, the aforementioned uh, G-Max Rapid Flow from Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, or maybe stuff like uh, Spit Shot or Tag Ball GX. Those are still threats as well. We do have the Ordinary Rod, so this is a list uh, based on my successful list of Player Cup 2 and uh, 3, so these are very similar. Plusephalon doesn't get a lot of new cards, uh, with new sets that get released, but this time around it did get escape rope. People are still not playing a Blacephalon too much, so that's why it's not too popular, but it's still an honorable mention. I wanted to give you guys a list as well. And then last but not least of the honorable mentions is Mad Party. Barely didn't make the cut, but I do expect this deck to get uh, the cut later down. Uh, maybe uh, when we're making another top 10 best videos, they're definitely going to be inc uh, included in here. But just because of how popular it got lately, we have uh, the tea break ability, being able to uh, discard a, a Mad Party Pokemon from your hand in order to draw two cards. The more Mad Parties there in their discard pile, the better the damage output of Mad Party. And of course, you hit weakness against Mewtwo, which seems to be uh, very popular right now. You also uh, hit uh, weakness against the Urshifus, which do see an increase in popularity, definitely in the first couple of weeks of battle styles. 
So uh, it's a good deck all around and it also uh, gained level ball. So uh, with level ball, finding your synesthes or pulte guys or bundledies is no problem at all. So uh, this is a very consistent list. Try it out for yourself. You have level ball, great ball, quick ball. So finding the Danny Jacks to just discard stuff is not uh, an issue at all. And you also have Giovanni's Exile to sometimes uh, get rid of your two prize Pokemon. And with Palpad, even if you are able to discard it in the early phases, you can get it back. And Orangru also protects uh, your energies or maybe your Palpads or ordinary rods, whatever you please. So... Uh, yeah, those are the honorable mentions out of the way. So uh, let's get down to uh, business right now with the top 10 best decks of Battle Cells. If you're enjoying the content I'm putting out, be sure to let me know by destroying that like button as it helps out the channel more than you would possibly think. I know I say this every single time, but uh, it does help the YouTube algorithm. And uh, that's what we're here for, right? Uh, to uh, let people see this across YouTube. And the more people see it, the, the more people will play the game. And I love it that way. So. Number 10 is gonna be for Decidueye. Decidueye actually left alone Obstagoon and there's a good reason for that. Obstagoon is not longer uh, necessary just because of the high amount of VMAXs. There's of course Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, Single Strike Urshifu VMAX, Center Scourge VMAX, Turnus VMAX, Dragapult VMAX is back. So way too many VMAX Pokemon so Obstagoon became obsolete. And even if uh, you will be playing Obstagoon, uh, other decks will still be playing Aegis Slash or stuff or just to counter it. Maybe Mewtwo plays the Greninja uh, that goes through it with Mist Slash. So uh, that's why Obstagoon is left behind and we're just gonna focus on pure Decidueye. This is uh, probably the list, if I'm not mistaken, that actually won the Chill series. So a uh, big shout out to that. Uh, we have of course the Decidueye uh, with a Deep Forest Camo, which is actually uh, yeah, uh, preventing all damage done to it from V Pokemon and GX Pokemon. And seeing as this top 10 will be created, you're gonna see how good Decidueye actually is. This is an anti-meta deck. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. Right. Sometimes you have that opening hand with a lot of Rosas and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, you get donked by other games where things go well. You can use uh, Snorax with the Gorman dice, drawing cards until you have seven in hand. And then following it up with a Rosa evolving into Decidueye. Having an army of Decidueye is good. You have the Mellow Lana as well as the Weak Guard energy. So uh, pesky threats like Volcanion and all that don't cause any troubles whatsoever. We also have the Mew to protect our bench. And uh, this is just a pure Decidueye build. Uh, even using the Tackle engine to easily find uh, the... Uh, Melolano, but also the Goose Hala because Goose Hala finds a special energy and special energy means capture energy or you can get the weak guard energy or even the aromatic grass energy so you're not able to get affected by special conditions. Uh, works in specific matchups for sure. So if, uh, the Sijuai, this is the pure anti-meta deck. It is always like like a little bit of a share of the meta game but not a lot of people play this just because of how uh, clunky it sometimes can be. You can get dunked with this list. And also uh, sometimes people have answers for it. Uh, for example, uh, they could be playing uh, Volcanion and they could be playing the fan of waves to get rid of your weak guard energies and out of nowhere you just lost the game so sometimes that happens sometimes they play the Aegis Slash definitely in Luke Metal and ADP so it all ha has to come down perfectly for you you don't have to break uh, you have to like make sure you don't break you have to make sure uh, the opponent is not playing one prizers and uh, yeah sometimes the meta just uh, punishes you so it's a high win high reward deck the Sidui number 10 Next up, number 9, I am uh, glad to say this, and uh, it is going to be Dracapult V Max. Ladies and gentlemen, the number 1 deck from Rebel Clash is back for more action. Why is this fantastic? I'm gonna explain to you. Uh, is that uh, Eternatus actually uh, it has seen a decrease in popularity, which is good for this deck because that was his main weakness, right? Eternus was the best deck before Battle Styles, and that was way too much for Dragapult to handle. You did see some Dragapult lists uh, running like the Lycan Rock from Team Up here and there, uh, even with Clefable and all that to have some energy disruption by its side, but it still didn't make the cut in the top 10 best decks. Right now, it is sliding in on number 9, but I actually have high hopes for this. There's also a Dragapult list that actually won a huge tournament. I have to check which tournament it was, but it actually was playing Star as well as a Greens build. So it was Greens uh, Dragapult VMAX. This is a straight consistency list with Jirachi, since I, I actually prefer that. We also have the EXP share, which definitely helps out with this, because uh, if Dragapult goes down, you can get an energy to one of the Pokemon that has EXP share equipped, which is awesome for another Dragapult. You could be cutting a Dragapult for a Blossophilon uh, from Cosmic Eclipse, to actually spread 12 damage when the opponent is at 3 prize cards. I don't do this because typically a Jirachi gets knocked out early on and then the following turn they have to go through a Dra Dracapult VMAX so uh, they can outplay that. Instead we're gonna be uh, relying on Crushing Hammers to slow the opponent down as well as copies of Power Plant. Power Plant shuts down the Danny Jax, it also shuts down Oracorio, uh, it also shuts down Mewtwo entirely with the perfection ability. So uh, Power Plant is good right now and uh, that's what we're playing. To slow the opponent down we have Crushing Hammers and we have Reset Stamp and a high amount of Marnie. So, 
The uh, horror psychic energy also helps you to get that extra buff uh, when the opponent attacks into you. There's no uh, Melolano in this list. Uh, instead, you just want to be going full force with Dragapult, slowing the opponent down with hammers, and then following your, uh, getting yourself another Dragapult instantly thanks to the EXP share. Jirachi also uh, finds yourself Energy Spinner or Quick Ball, whatever you need in the early phases to get yourself Dragapult and attach of turn. That's what you need in this deck. Mew is also very great to clean up some stuff with the side power. Sometimes you can make sure you can get multiple prize cards simultaneously by uh, using Max Phantom widely and putting five damage counters across the opponent's field until some of the Pokemon have like one HP remaining, actually 10 HP remaining and then Mew can finish off the job but more importantly it protects our bench from stuff like Tag, Bull Jacks, Spit Shot and stuff. This list is also not running any Dedenny Jacks and the reason for that is that we're running a high amount of Fire Plant and we don't want to Power Plant ourselves. Uh, but there's a high amount of like Quick Ball, Jirachi and all that and we have four copies of Dragapult and that's actually the only Pokemon you need in the long run and Jirachi can also find Research or Marnie so no Dedenny Jacks in this list but but instead made up for a reset stamp, high amount, as well as crushing hammers. Okay, I hopefully Dragapult will do better uh, when the weeks continue, but Dragapult is here, it is going to be staying in the format, uh, but there's still, it's an arch enemy, Eternatus, dropped all the way to the 8th place right here. Uh, I know Dragapult uh, is uh, now seeing play, but Eternatus, uh, why is it so low on the list? You could have guessed it already. Rapid Strike Urshifu V Max is there, so even to have a little bit of a slight chance, that we are now playing Weak God Energies and Eternatus. But not only that, uh, Eternus has our, itself two new, uh, yeah, unfavorable matchups because of battle styles. Think about Victini VMAX. Very, very bad because they hunt on your Eternity that wants to be evolving and we are not able to one-hit KO uh, a Victini VMAX. Also, we need to have our bench filled up with Crobat. So they just gust around Eternus and the prize race goes on and on and you lose the game. So Victini VMAX, terrible matchup. Rapid Strike Urshifu, terrible matchup. Single Strike Urshifu, terrible matchup. The Sidui, terrible matchup. So uh, lots of terrible matchups in the metal right now. Even Luke Metal, terrible matchup. So Eternus has been dropped all the way to the 8th place. It is still in the format. You still have to respect it, uh, but... Yeah, that's what we're saying here is that Eternus dropped down a little bit in popularity and we can see that in the results of Dino Data. There's of course Spirit Tomb to have a little bit of a slight chance against uh, the uh, Decidueye, but it doesn't always help out seeing as uh, certain Decidueye players do play Big Charm and you cannot get over that number and uh, yeah, sometimes that's a little bit uh, bothersome. They also play Metal Law and all that. We have the Eveltal. People were wondering why Eveltal is in here. Not to discard special energies, although that is a nice option. You just use it for the free retreat. So uh, if you go second, you can use the Power Accelerator and uh, accelerate to, to two Eternus V. That means you actually have uh, at least one of them which can evolve. Sometimes Victini punishes, uh, actually KOs one of them. Then you can evolve the other one and uh, it goes around with other matchups as well. So uh, very interesting. Uh, it gained exp EXP share, uh, as mentioned, very great. You can uh, put that onto a Pokemon of choice and then you can actually make sure you can, uh, yeah, do some stuff. Also, uh, if you put that on uh, Eveltal, sometimes you can use the clutch ability and uh, make sure the opponent can retreat until you have the boss for a game. So I've seen a couple of things working out with EXP share, but it's a very solid list. Also re respecting the lots of GX abilities in play. So uh, also stuff like uh, Heatran GX with the hot burn GX and uh, yeah, burning road ability. We shut that down, which is very uh, scary for Eternus uh, for sure. So uh, Eternus number eight. Now, number eight. Seven, yeah. Number seven is going to be going to Luke Metal. This is a, a funny archetype, seeing as there's more VMAX Pokemon. That's how uh, this deck gets better, just because of Zamazenta. The Dauntless Shield is here to protect yourself against the annoying VMAX Pokemon. So you can just be safe and sound. There's uh, coding metal energies in here. There's Goose Hollow to find them out. So you will have not have to worry about your fire weakness, even though there's Victini, there's Blacephalon, there's uh, Sentiscorch, there's Mew Mew with Welder. Lots of Welder builds out there, but don't be afraid too much. You can just protect yourself with the metal coating energy. And if they are playing stuff, uh, yeah, still Power Plant. Power Plant seems to be huge right now. And it's probably also the reason why Blacephalon didn't see that much success just yet, because they rely on the uh, Oracorio and the Danny Jack. So lots of Power Plant in the format still. Uh, what else can we see is that they do respect the Decidueye. We have Aegis Last Throne in here to just cut open those Decidueyes and uh, win that matchup. You also have, of course, the one and only Luke Metal. Full Metal Wall GX is very powerful. This list is also not running Crushing Hammers. You might think that playing Research and some Crushing Hammers is better. You might just get rid of your Tackle Engine, but the Tackle Engine has actually proven itself worthy already and winning. The only new card is the, uh, the, uh, yeah, the Escape Rope instead of a Fort Switch, but other than that, it's just uh, awesome. Also, Escape Rope, make sure you can switch uh, again to your Zation once again by using Lily's Pokedot, which is totally awesome. And the opponent also needs to select one of their bench Pokemon, so it's gonna be awesome with that way. There's four copies of Zation because Intrepid Sword is just broken. I know a lot of Marnie in the format, but sometimes if you are able to accelerate 
accelerate some energies. That's good. You hide behind some dolls until you're ready to uh, attack. The Cape of Toughness actually puts Zacian's uh, HP all the way to 270 HP. And the combination of full metal wall jacks means the opponent will need to slap 300 damage to knock it out. Which sometimes ADP Zacian players are not able to do. Unless they find a rusted sword at uh, in times. And even then they will still need to uh, have another card to go over the edge. So the Cape of Toughness protects yourself against the ADP Zacian matchup. Which is definitely popular. So uh, a very solid list. I do love the fact you have Capture Energy. Uh, with Capture Energy you can get yourself a Zacian to use Intrepid Sword uh, instantly. Because of the high amount of Tackle. Tackle, uh, get yourself Luke Metal. Get yourself Cynthia Catlin to draw cards or Goose Hollow depending on what you want and then Capture Energy find your Salvation to draw cards the following turn. So very solid list, has favorable matchup in the form of like you can shut down uh, Mewtwo instantly with the uh, Power Plants. I don't know if that's a favorable matchup if they are playing the Wilder build or not but uh, you also can get rid of a lot of energies on the Mewtwo by using Full Metal Wall Jacks at the full potential by using something like Escape Rope or maybe bossing the uh, Mewtwo uh, when it's uh, going around. So uh, interesting for sure, has a favorable matchup against Decidueye, has a favorable matchup against Picaram, favorable matchup against uh, yeah other decks as well. ADPization could also be one of them if you are, uh, of course, having your Cape of Toughness equipped correctly. So that's that. Moving forward, we're going to go to the sixth, uh, sixth spot, going to Santiscorge v Max. I uh, recently actually got second place in the Albion Cup. Uh, a couple of weeks ago with Santa Scorch. This is probably the almost exact same list I would say, but we do have actually uh, access to the escape rope. I do suggest if you're playing like four switches, just put one escape rope in there. Sometimes that can come in clutch. Sometimes you cannot one-hit KO the active. Let's say you're up against an opposing Santa Scorch. You only need one more prize card. There's nothing you can do. Uh, you have to play Welder and uh, yeah, you cannot play Welder and Boss in the same turn. So escape rope can be that perfect thing. Although now that I think about it, Fion is also part of this deck. So uh, you might just uh, cut this Fion for something else entirely and uh, yeah, and I don't think about it, we're going to be cutting Fion for a second copy of Reset Stamp because I do think Reset Stamp is very powerful. The one copy of Heat Fire Energy will make sure you survive certain hits. I'm uh, thinking about, uh, for instance, uh, if they want to Tandem Shock you twice, it's not going to work if you have that Heat Fire Energy equipped. It. So, big fan of the Heat Fire Energy, the one off. You also have Great Catcher to punish stuff like the Dani because with only uh, yeah, three energies attached here, this guy is able to one hit KO the Danis, which I do love with Great Catcher. You have Giratina still with Dimension Bridge being able to get rid of special energies. You are not going to be able to do that on stuff like Corviknight, but Corviknight seems to be uh, kind of like a failure could be, could be coming back in the format with some other build but Corvi Knight right now is not performing too well and that's because of the popularity of other decks that we're going to be talking about later down in this video so uh what else uh, is this air to love about is like uh, three copies of Volcano, your ideal starter because the more v maxes they're out there the better you want to be using all the energies onto your senti scorch i uh, suggest like weldering onto senti and then even a flare starter onto that and then weldering the following turn is going to get you through the uh, huge numbers and you're going to get of course uh, lots of prize cards with that still jirachi engine uh, just because you can just find your uh, welders, you can find your giant hearts, etc., which is very good. And uh, with Scoop Up Net, you're going to be able to uh, abuse Galarian Zigzagoon for more damage output or use, of course, the, uh, the Giratina because there's a lot of special energies, as we've seen before. Um, Eternus now has weak guard energy, sometimes they have to attach it or they don't have the attach of turn. You have uh, special energies against the Decidueye, special energies of Horror Psychic Energy and Dracopult, Capture Energies and uh, Coding Metal Energies and Luke Metal, so lots of special energies, Speed Lighting Energies and Picaram, so uh, Giratina is actually very very good right now, the more special energies they get released. And I didn't even talk about the uh, Rapid Strike uh, Energy and Single Strike Energy, so lots of special energies, Giratina is good. Sun Scorch is still as busted as ever because it's a Wilder deck and also has uh, great things going for it. Then, the number five. Can you guess it? Can you guess it? It is Picaram. Yeah, Picaram has dropped down quite a little bit uh, if we're looking at the results. So uh, this is a, a Picaram list. From Battle Styles, I don't know if you should be including any cards. Um, you still have, this is a solid archetype nevertheless. I do uh, actually want to be cutting this uh, Vicavolt for another Mewtwo because I do think Mewtwo is very powerful right now with Rapid Strike, Urshifu in the format, Single Strike, Urshifu in the format, Mewtwo's in the format, so you definitely need those. There's Crushing Hammers to slow the opponent down, Bosses or even Team Yelgrunts. Could be nice against certain archetypes to just slow them down. I'm uh, mainly thinking about Dracopult and Eternus, so uh, this is very good against those specific archetypes. You have Speed Lighting Energies to draw yourself some cards and it's just good all around. Uh, also, now that I think about it, I uh, have to check real quick if there is any cards from Battle Styles, actually trainer cards that we want to be including into Picaram. I probably doubt it. There's Escape Rope though, so Escape Rope and Tag Bolt could be a nice combo. So we are including that one of Escape Rope in here. What else can we see is the Fan of Waves. Could actually have some extra uh, disruption by your side instead of just the hammers. You could be actually including some fan of waves. Now that I think about it, let's put in one fan of uh, yeah fan of fate, fan of waves, and uh, we're gonna be actually cutting down on the Yelgrunt. 
And uh, yeah, this is, seems to be nice. You have the Algorand level balls and all that. You definitely don't need that. Tool Jammer is something interesting you can think about, but this is probably my 60 we're gonna be rocking with for a couple of weeks. So uh, Picaram, still good. Definitely play the two copies of Mewtwo. It's gonna be helping you out. You even have the Cherish Bell to search out the Mewtwo uh, so you actually have it more quick quicker than ever before and the only thing you need to do is put like a Mewtwo, in, uh, a Pikaram in the discard pile or a Raichu and uh, a Lone Raichu in the de discard pile and then use Mewtwo, the perfection ability, knocking out uh, the uh, things that are weak to Psychic. So uh, very solid indeed, Pikaram is still a contender in the format. I wonder if it will see more popularity, people actually slow down on playing Pikaram because of the Urshifus, but uh, with of course the two copies of Mewtwo in here, you shouldn't have any troubles whatsoever. Okay, next up, number four is Mew Mew Welder. So Mewtwo seems to be in two archetypes right now in the Picaram deck and in this uh, variant. You could be playing this as a pure fire build or just with the Aurora energies. The Aurora energies will give yourself some better matchups. This Greninja actually allows you to slash open some Decidueyes, which is awesome. Uh, you also have access to uh, this Vile Plume 180 uh, if you don't have any damage counters on yourself. Very nice if the opponent like started with something like a Dedane or Crobat and they're still in the active position. You can already start push pressuring some damage upward with Massive Bloom. If Mewtwo got some damage but you survived the hit, you can go for the Incinerator with the darkest tornado GX being able to one hit kill anything it comes out of nowhere it's awesome you have of course a venom shot by your side sometimes uh, you can go first attach of turn and may or maybe even in the late game you can get yourself that venom shot going around knocking out something like the Dane. you can even knock out crowbat v if you want to with the addition of the one of galarian zigzagoon let's just hope you don't ever start with it the good thing about mewtwo is just it hits weakness against rapid strike urshifu single strike urshifu mewtwo itself and it has so many viable options you have an answer against the sigui you can even go full Reshizard against stuff like ADP or stuff like Luke Metal. There's a lot to love about this. And uh, Victini VMAX also has to be afraid a little bit just because of the Flare Blitz GX. 300 damage output is ridiculous and it does uh, that for if you go first and then attach and then the following turn Welder, you're going to be able to slap 300 on the second turn and that's going to be uh, very crucial for Victini VMAX having 310 HP and uh, with the Galarian Zigzagoon you can one hit KO that. Also same scenario for uh, Zacian, uh, ADP Zacian players that uh, do still play Big Charm with their ADP so you can also one hit KO that. So uh, a lot of things still off. Uh, you also have NDDV just to protect yourself from stuff like the Mimikyu. If people want to be tacking against you, uh, if they have an uh, unfavorable matchup against Mewtwo, they could be tacking in the Mimikyu and uh, with of course NDD you can uh, heal yourself back up. If they put something like Galarian Zigzagoon and then Mimikyu, you're not going to be able to do anything anymore. Well with this you will be. And also uh, yeah, it's just a good deck all around. If your Mewtwo survives, you can also go for Hot Burn GX, seeing as this list is running three switches and an escape rope. So uh, the only uh, supporters you need is like Welder and Boss, and uh, as soon as you have that, you're gonna be good with Mewtwo. Interesting deck for sure. Very consistent. If you, with the four Poke Gears, you're probably gonna find that Welder. Giant Heart is also in a couple of uh, top tier archetypes, so sometimes you don't even need to slap down your Giant Heart because the opponent will be doing it for you, which is totally awesome. Next is, you could have guessed it already, it is a Rapid Strike Urshifu V. And it's going to be, uh, yeah, you can play that in a couple of variants. There, it could be played as a straight variant with um, the Octillery. You could be playing it with Chinchinos. I'm actually gonna be giving you to yourself two lists right now. This is the Chinchino build, which actually is awesome because it is allowing you to splay down uh, Cheryl's. Because of the high amount of level ball, you can get your Chinchinos out and play, and that is gonna be your draw engine. And then you could be playing cards like Boss's Orders or Cheryl to just make sure that uh, yeah you can uh, heal off your Pokemon or boss whatever you need. You have the G Max Rapid Flow. Uh, I know I, I've noticed that a lot of decks are playing Mew in their list, so uh, yeah it's gonna be a little bit uh, on the third place spot unless like uh, Mew rotates at one point. But right now third spot Bronze is not too bad for this deck, and uh, ha there's so many ways you can play it. We can you can play Rapid Strike Urshifu with Or Beetle V Max. You can play Rapid Strike Urshifu with Dracapult V Max. You can be Rapid Strike Urshifu with Chinchino as you can see here, and uh, this is actually a nice list because you can uh, draw so many cards you're probably gonna find your one-off reset stamp or uh, the uh, karate belt and it's gonna be awesome because your rapid strike urshifu will probably stay alive turn after turn and with the high amount of air balloon you can switch behind or around your pokemon the ampoleon um, also helps out against wilder builds by the way that i actually want to be going overboard ampoleon um, can be in a nice early lead just uh, switch into it and the opponent is gonna be stuck um, this is gonna be uh, interesting for stuff like victini v max if they uh, don't have their stuff out just yet you can be uh, getting this uh, as well so Interesting list, you also have Capture Energies to find yourself the Minchinos and uh, Jirachi of course but protects your uh, Psychic Weakness so uh, stuff like Mewtwo or Dracobolt are not able to punish you. Uh, another build of Urshifu uh, with Rapid Strike is the one of course with Jirachi. 
This is also a very consistent list because it is running the uh, Shining Fates Celebi with the Woodland Stroll. Allows you to look at the top six cards and if there's a special energy, put it in hand. With of course stuff like a uh, high amount of switches and uh, scoop up nets. This could be uh, and even escape ropes. It could be a nice way to find your rapid strike energy when the time is right. So you don't even need Octillery uh, to set that one up. Uh, Urshifu is very strong. Gale Trust 150, if you're behind in price cards and if you have a basic fighting energy attached, that's 190 freaking damage. Or uh, if you're just ahead in the price rate, 160, which is also not bad at all because that two shots Santa Scorch, two shots Victini, uh, yeah, it's a lot to love about this. And you also, with GMAC Rapid Flow, we can end the game on the spot. And it's very good against tag teams as well because uh, you can just go for Gale Trust 150 and in the following turn, you can clean it up with the GMAX Rapid Flow. You definitely need stuff like Jirachi GX in here, otherwise Mewtwo and Dragon Ball will just overrun you. Uh, but it's a very solid archetype and uh, it definitely deserves the spot on the number three uh, Yeah, the number three spot definitely good rapid strike Urshifu is also the most hyped card from battle styles now Victini VMAX Ooh, yeah, Victini VMAX. I uh, actually had some tough luck playing in a recent tournament uh, lately with Victini VMAX But I assure you this has seen a ton of success uh, Don't let my uh, yeah best of one tournament uh, guide you that Victini VMAX is not that good Victini VMAX is good, and that's because there's a lot of VMAX archetypes out there. As mentioned, Single Strike Urshifu VMAX, uh, we have Rap uh, Dracapult VMAX, Eternus VMAX, Santa Scorch VMAX, uh, there's Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX and a whole heap of varieties. So half of the meta is VMAXs, Victini loves that because of max victory, slapping 100 damage but 120 more if the opponent is a V Pokemon. So this deck is a Wilder deck that don't doesn't always need a Wilder, if you uh, understand me. Uh, that's why there's also a couple of research in here. On your very first turn, the only thing you have to do in order to sell, uh, ensure yourself the game, slapping down a Victini and attaching it of the attach of the turn. That's all you need to do. That's not too hard, right? That reminds us of ADP, but that's coming up next. So uh, little spoilers because you probably already knew that it was number one. So uh, you just attach, you have your Victini up and ready, uh, and then the following turn you just evolve into Victini VMAX, attach of turn, and uh, yeah, you can just boss. Also, I wrote an article which will come out uh, onto Potown Store, the website, about Victini VMAX and how good I think it is, all talking about its favorable and unfavorable matchups. And the good news is that Victini VMAX has a bright feature ahead of him, just because of the fact that the more VMAX Pokemon will come out. We have Calyrex, we've seen the scans, it's gonna be good, it's gonna be coming out, but we won't have KO that. Same scenario, you go first, attach to Victini, following turn you attach, evolve to Victini VMAX and just boss. There's four copies of boss resorts in here just to ensure you boss what you need. There's two Dedane, two Crobats, so you can draw cards, so you can find those boss resorts. You might think about putting in Pokegear or a Jirachi engine with from team up. It all is all your personal play style. This is a, a list based on Gustavo Wada's play, uh, play style, so uh, with the two Crobats, about the two the, the Danny and even the cricket tune to draw yourself uh, some cards and the heat fire energy protects yourself against as mentioned the flare bliss from Mewtwo and Mew with the glare and zigzagoon ping so uh, that's why there's one copy of that in here fan of waves as mentioned lots of special energies in the format aurora energy speed lighting energy heat fire energy capture energy uh Metal Coding Energy, Horror Psychic Energy, Weak Heart Energy, there's a lot of things to love about Special Energies, but you can punish them with Fan of Waves, and there's two copies of that in here, so if you slow the momentum of certain decks and punishes their evolving V Pokemon, you're probably gonna be winning the game, and that's how good Victini V Max is. So, uh, very, very aggressive archetype. Against tag teams, I definitely suggest uh, going full Reshizard mode, or just attacking, knocking something out, and going uh, to a switch and then use Hotburn GX. Still in the late game, you can Cramorant just because the Danny is still around. Uh, although Cramorant is not seeing too much play, and that's also the reason why Crocephalon is not seeing too much play. Everybody's playing Mew. That's too bad. People are playing a high amount of Marnie. Also too bad. And uh, there's also Ampoleon, which completely shuts down Jirachi Engine. So yeah, Blacephalon didn't have it good. Maybe we have to rebuild that. I actually have a little bit of an idea how we can do that, but this is going to be for a future video. So uh, Victini VMAX on the number two spot. And then to finish this video, once and for all, the best decks from Battle Styles. Ta-da! <laughs> it's ADP Z with ropes. Yeah, it is just so ridiculous that this deck sees so much success. It's, yeah, now having a great partner against his Welder Weakness builds. So uh, if you go first, just get your Empoleon in the active position and their Jirachi for Stellar Wish will not do anything. They're shut down, which is totally awesome. You also one hit KO Santa Scorch VMAX after the buff of Alter Creation. And this deck just uh, has 50-50 matchups or even better matchups across the entire field. Against stuff like Decidueye, you might have some trouble. So uh, you could tack in uh, Aegislash Slash if you were respecting that matchup. Also, Mawa GX could also be cheesing uh, some sort of these uh, Decidueye players to slap down stuff on their bench. Definitely an interesting archetype. The only thing you need to do is like attach of turn, pass, attach, go for Alter Creation GX. And then out of nowhere, 
boom, you get yourself uh, the winning game already because you only need to gust twice and because of the captivating wink of Marwell, the opponent probably will have to slap down their Dedanis and Crobats on the bench even though they don't want to. And uh, with the help of Rusted Sword, the Zacian is able to cut through open tag teams, 290 damage output after all the creation and of course the uh, Rusted Sword equipped it. That's a whole heap of damage to dish out and uh, that one shot speaker arms Mewtwo's all day long and uh, also has of course a little bit of an edge against uh, Luke Metal if you're able to get it out fast enough. With energy switch you're going to be able to get alter creation out even going second so you can just uh, spam the Danny. there's three copies of the Danny in here the Danny research hope you have a metal saucer so you can saucer that onto a Zacian. and then afterwards energy switching it onto the adp attach of the turn is the water energy and bam alter creation on the first turn going second insane calyx well shuts down stadium cards sees a lot of play uh, definitely uh, uh making sure that giant heart doesn't come in play but also stuff like a uh, power plan could be pre uh, prevented with that uh, stuff like a Captivating Wing otherwise is shut down, which is something you don't want. You have four copies of Escape Rope. So Battle Styles gave uh, ADP Zation uh, like five cards, uh, four Escape Ropes and an Empoleon. And out of nowhere, boom, best deck in format again. So uh, if there's ever a deck that saw so much success ever since Zoroark GX, well, here you have an ADP Zation on top and uh, you have many gusting outs, four bosses orders, four Escape Rope and a Great Catcher. So gusting something out of the active is just easy as pie. And then uh, Zacian cleans up, taking multiple prize cards, thanks to the de addition of Alter Creation GX. Yeah, this is my uh, top 10 list. If your list is different, be sure to smack it down in the comment section. This has been half an hour talking about competitive meta gaming. Hopefully you guys found my rap uh, interesting enough. I'm gonna be making more videos like these uh, when of course uh, we get some more weeks into the Battle Styles format. If you're interested uh, in seeing other videos, we made videos about almost all of these decks. ADPization, Victini V Max, Rapid Strike, Urshifu, um, yeah, Santa Scores, all of these decks have been featured on the channel before, even Dracopult VMAX, and the Dracopult VMAX deck uh, that we featured was actually the Green's Exploration build. So if you want to see something of these decks, uh, be sure to check out my other videos uh, on my channel. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm posting daily Pokemon TCG content. We're also going to be giving away some uh, code cards right now, uh, courtesy of PotownStore.com. I'm going to be giving away two battle styles up on screen. If you are the first person to claim them, be sure to only claim one so uh, two people have a chance to win something. And I'm also going to be giving away a 10 euro coupon code for cardmarket.com. That is a European platform where you can buy and sell cards to people all across Europe. And that is only for new registration. So uh, if you don't have an account on a uh, card market and if you're ever doubting, uh, I will try it out, card market. Well, that is the 10 euro coupon code for you. Anyhow, have yourself a fantastic rest of your day and uh, yeah, let me know which deck you're gonna be playing. These decks are gonna be good for Players' Cup for the qualifications, so uh, be sure to select one. Uh, as more weeks come uh, by, we're actually gonna see how the meta will develop, but right now, these are the best decks right now. So be sure to pick one and let me know in the comments what your favorite deck is. Anyhow, have yourself a fantastic rest of your day. This was another Zapdos TCG episode and I'll see you guys tomorrow with more Pokemon TCG content. I'm out. Peace.